Hello everyone, uh, this is Hilman Hui from the Architectural Services Department and I'm the Senior Project Manager for the Batham Temporary Quarantine Camp Project. I'm very happy to have taken part in this project, which is a very memorable experience for me. So here I'll give a brief introduction of the project and then keeping representatives to tell you more about the BIM aspect of the project. At the beginning of last year, when the pandemic broke out, RGSD was commissioned to construct temporary quarantine camps to cope with the worsening situation. Four sites were identified and our project team was tasked to build a total number of 120 quarantine units at the Batham GBC Activity Center. There are three main challenges that we had to face and tackle for this special mission. The first one is time. We had committed to complete all units and make it ready for operation within two months. Two months from nothing to occupation and operation. To meet this target, the use of MIC would be the smartest solution, which is also one of the government's policy initiatives for the construction industry. And this also formed our second challenge. Since the use of MIC was at that time still rather new and experimental to the government projects. The last but not least uh, was statutory compliance. This project was given an exceptionally tight and demanding schedule, but there was no exception for all the necessary statutory requirements that the government project needs to comply with and to go through all the necessary procedures to obtain approvals from the authorities, including FSD, WSD, and so on. So the facilitation and collaboration among all parties was indeed the most crucial factor for achieving the project target. So here's an aerial view of the project site, which is in Batham. This site is owned by police as JPC Activity Center. This site is very remote from the urban areas with very pleasant environment, fresh air, nice views, which is indeed very important for the confinees who need to stay in this place for at least 14 days. There are some existing quarters which have already been converted and refurbished in the quarantine units before our works commenced. And we were given this red area, which is the open ground of the center to build the new units. So here is a master layout plan to show how we place the quarantine units, which are highlighted in orange color. They are divided into six blocks and each block consists of two stories. The project commenced on February 17 and was handed over to the Department of Health on April 22nd only two months time. The building blocks in green color are the existing quarters which I've just mentioned, and they were refurbished for quarantine purpose as well, and were completed before our works started. This is a floor plan of a typical block. There is a maximum limit of eight units between two fire staircases. This is a compromise with the FSD for exemption from the provision of fire sprinklers for the quarantine units. This is very important because it saves a lot of money and also a lot of time because fire installations uh, cannot be pre-installed in the factory. The typical units are all one bedroom unit, which has the dimensions of a uh, 20 feet container and the width is kept as 2.5 meters so that we do not have to apply for a wide low permit for transportation. We do not want we certainly do not want these quarantine camps to be used for a long time. But meanwhile, we do not want to put this into the public field site right after the pandemic either. So we have uh, made some provisions in the design of the units to allow flexibility for future use, say conversion to a residential unit with a combination of two modules for use as social housing. For this purpose, we had to keep uh, very close communication with the building's department to to make sure that uh, PD's, uh, PD's approval could be readily obtained with minimal alteration to the current design in the future. We have some uh, enhanced design for the drainage system as well. As you may have learned that uh, the drainage system could be one of the routes that the virus can quickly spread out. So we used a W trap where a refilling pipe is connected from the wash basin so as, to, so as to prevent loss of water seal. We have also increased the height of the vampire outlet to be three meters above the roof level. And we have also adopted 
a two-pipe system to separate uh, soil and waste pipes to prevent contamination. So here are a few images of the completed buildings. And we also uh, put some uh, nice graphics at the external walls. So um, no matter you like this or not, and I, 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 I hope you will never have the need to stay in this place. So I wish you all good health and stay safe. Thank you very much. So thank you, Hillman. Hi, everyone. This is Michelle from Hipping Construction, the project manager in charge of Pattern Quarantine Center. I now shall continue with the challenges encountered in delivering this project. Although the structure of pattern is considered rather simple compared to normal construction projects, this project did face two major challenges. The first and foremost must be the extreme short construction period. With only about two months to complete all the design and construction works, accuracy was very important in every stage, leaving no rooms for error and delay. From fulfilling several governmental, departmental user requirements, for an instance, the operator, C4A services, and the end user, Department of Health, and etc., all the way to formulating a detailed structural, architectural, and MEP design for approval. The entire design intent acceptance process took no more than 14 calendar days to complete. To meet the time constraints, all 120 modules were swiftly fabricated off-site in the MIC factory in China and then shipped to Hong Kong for installation within 30 calendar days. And the second challenge encounter is the congested construction site and limited accessibility. Given that the site is located within the existing junior police call center and adjacent to other in-use facilities, site access and also space are very significantly limited. These require careful planning to ensure the safe and efficient delivery of MIC modules. Accessibility was also carefully considered to satisfy statutory requirement. For example, the provision of means of escape routes for occupants and also the width, I mean the gaps between the blocks for EVA while maximizing the number of rooms that we can provide. So accuracy played an essential role in overcome both challenges, as well as site logistics, quality control, project design and fabrication elements. Carrying out this project during the severe COVID-19 outbreak was definitely another challenge. Numerous protocols and restrictions were put in place to limit the spread of virus, including working from home, limited number of site staff, reduced physical interaction, and border restriction between PLC and Hong Kong. All of these had put a very tremendous impact onto the project, particularly to our communication and coordination on project details. To execute a successful project, communication between relevant parties must be smooth and without any hinder. Traditionally, frequent meetings would be held within different stakeholders throughout the project to exchange information and to resolve problems and also do a lot of reviews. Yet in the midst of this pandemic, opportunities for communication was severely limited by social distancing and limited physical interaction in order to prevent the spread of COVID. Without adequate communication, it is very hard to provide and receive necessary, accurate and sufficient information to relevant stakeholders, including the client, MIC manufacturer, window and facade supplier, furniture vendor, and the project team and also frontline staff. Any misunderstanding may cause serious failure in both design stage and construction stage and all in all affect the schedules of construction program. That is why BEAM play a very crucial role in ensuring adequate communication and coordination. Without face-to-face -face direct communication, BEAM act as a common source and data for coordination and breaking through geological and physical boundaries significantly. 
Autodesk River software was used for this project to help overcome the limitation of geological boundaries. Through using Autodesk AEC Cloud, the RIFID model became the single source of truth, and this ensured all the stakeholders were assessing the most up-to-date information and could closely monitor the project progress. Furthermore, engineers are able to easily present their design by using 3D models during virtual meetings and receive approvals from clients. This drastically reduced the coordination period to only 14 calendar days. It has also provided adequate level of detailing and allowing stakeholders to examine and review design simulation. Unlike prefabricated or precast components, which only comprise small parts of the building and still require substantial amount of work trays on site, MIC, Modular Integrated Construction, is an innovative construction method which we adopted in this project with the concept of factory assembly followed by on-site installation. Basically, both internal and external finishes like wall lining and flooring, facade window and door installation are all complete off-site, providing a turnkey experience to end user once essential utilities like electricity and water supplies are connected. Besides MIC, DFMA approach, namely design for manufacture and assembly, was also adopted in pattern project, especially in the piping works. DFMA is another construction method that involves combining two methodologies. The first one would be design for manufacture, and the other one would be design for assembly. This is achieved through simplifying the design and thereby reducing assembly time and the number of components to be manufactured. Both methods greatly benefit the project by providing a shorter construction time, improved working environment, and also site safety, and also environmental friendliness. Last but not least, higher construction quality. By using these fabrication method methods, different construction processes can be carried out simultaneously and thereby significantly reduce the entire construction period. All fabricated elements were produced in different factories during the same period. And to reinforce the coordination between different specialists, BEAM was adopted to ensure all elements would fit together on site. Fabrication drawings were generated from 3D BEAM models and to increase the preciseness of the product. By fitting in with the framing plan generated from Autodesk Rifid model and Autodesk Civo 3D, vehicle path simulation tools were adopted to facilitate the site planning works at very early stage. An attempt to simulate the route path for fire truck um, for FSD, the fire services department's review and approval. With this program, the designer can observe the traffic flow in and out from the venue and also compare all the results in order to design the most suitable overall design. Thank you, Michelle, for your presentation. I am Vivian Lu, the beam engineer of Pat Hong Quarantine Center project. I will discuss how the application of beam assist site planning QAQC monitoring and the significant improvement of this project Thank due you, to the use of BIM. Autodesk Navis Works was adopted to generate the 4D simulation in order to visualize and check the schedule of site activities. Since all temporary works and machines were envisioned together with the design structure and existing site conditions, traffic flow could be planned and monitored efficiently. Through Typical management problems such as resources allocation in such limited site area could be resolved earlier. The project team could efficiently evaluate construction methods by carefully reviewing each method, in which the final operation method would be guaranteed to be best suit of the project and multiple backup plans can be simulated. 
Real-time GPS shipment tracking has been adopted in this project to monitor the shipment's location. In the event of a delay, the project teams would be immediately notified and adapt to the delay. On this project, a drone was used to record and monitor the project's bi-weekly progress off-site, reducing physical interaction on-site. The videos allow managers to compare the current site progress with the 4D sequence and planned site layout without visiting the site. During the pandemic, the borders restrictions and social distancing restrict quality control. Off-site inspections in China were unable to take place. On-site inspections were also affected by limited inspectors. There were five main processes included in the QA-QC monitoring workflow. First, the subcontractor representative conducts a self-inspection in China factories and records the inspection by photos, videos, and endorsed documents. Besides, online e-inspection with relevant parties were conducted to ensure the modular's quality. During this inspection, the fabricator would mention and check that they comply with the drawings. Traditionally, paper records are used to record and store important inspection information. On this project, a unique QR code was printed and attached to each modular to ensure detailed tracking. This paperless alternative method saves significant amounts of paper, making it a sustainable yet efficient option. Once scanned, the QR code displays all relevant inspection information and progress monitoring could be assessed and checked if necessary. Upon the modular's delivery, inspector conducts random checks on site by simply scanning the QR code. Apart of prefabrication elements, site quality monitoring was very important, such as the location and member size of steel frame. To make sure the foreman and workers fully understood the design, the updated beam model was provided. The inspectors, engineers, and foreman were able to easily check, measure, and compare the model with as built construction by using mobile phones or other devices through the AEC platform. This helps ensure the accuracy of project. The user-friendly platform could easily be used by non-beam users such as site foreman and frontline workers. The adoption of beam and innovative technologies on this project have overcome some of the limitations of traditional construction process. The use of integrated project delivery enables construction sequence to be overlapped. Stakeholders are better informed with access to update information and increase opportunities to cooperate with each other. As a result, design and construction phase are considerably compressed. On this project, the DFMA model was directly integrated into the MIC model at design stage to guarantee its installation. Furthermore, the structural and MEP elements were able to be prefabricated at the same time as the steel frame construction. This simplified the on-site construction. Here we can compare traditional project delivery and integrated project delivery further. The green curves represent the cost design change required across the different stages. The later the changes are made, the greater the cost is required. On the other side, the yellow curve which shows the ability to impact costs, reduce as the project progress. As seen in the graph, the traditional design progress mainly occurs during the construction documentation process. With the integrated project delivery, the use of BIM enabled the design process to be pushed forward to the design stage. This reduced the cost need to make changes. The numbers of changes are also significantly reduced since problems can be identified by using 3D simulation during the design stage. As a result, 70% of construction rewards such as design change and management are reduced. Due to the adoption of BIM and prefabrication technology, 
significant improvement was achieved in Pattern Quality Center project. We delivered the site formation contract 47% ahead of the contract date of completion. With the building contract of 120 MIC, we were able to hand over 10 days in advance. BIM also considerably reduced the human resources used to complete the project. In planning the project, it was expected that over 100,000 man hours would be required. However, in the end, despite the challenges caused by the pandemic, the number of man hours spent was below 90,000, saving over 15,000 hours. We have prepared a video for you to understand more about Pat Home Quarantine Center project.